Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. So today is a very special day, I think, and uh, because we're uh, going to do an interview. Yep, and uh, the people that we're interviewing is Dan and Jen Nevada. And uh, no, that's not their real last name, but that's what their channel's called. And I want to urge you to go down to the description and you'll find a link to their website and to their uh, channels, Facebook, all that good stuff. And uh, I really enjoy them because uh, they're a little bit younger than me and Sherry. Uh, he got an opportunity to uh, retire early, which we were on the 50 mark. And uh, they're just, you know, they sold their house, did the whole works, and, uh, and just enjoying life to its fullest. Uh, uh, I think you'll appreciate the fact that they're utilizing uh, 1,000 trails and uh, they're using a motorhome. And the interview went really well. And uh, I was hoping to have Derek with us, but we've had a very full schedule this week. So without further ado, here's our interview with Dan and Jen Nevada. Well, hello everyone. And I have the privilege today to introduce to you Dan and Jen Nevada. That's what they call their channel. And I wanna uh, welcome you guys to the show and I, I hope you uh, have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So uh, I've been watching your channel for, actually I discovered you guys, uh, I think it was around the beginning of the year. And the first video I saw you guys doing, you were in Nevada. Um, and you, uh, you were, uh, I think Jen was really sick. You had a, the, a flu or something, didn't you? Yes. The norovirus. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. In January, yes. That's right. Well, the norovirus. <laughs> if we got it from family at Christmas. Yeah. Very <laughs> good. Old the gift that keeps on giving. That was what it was. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we uh, so I watched your show and it's like, and I was going, man, that looks like Robin Sherry. That you know, we're, you guys are kind of close to our age, and I, and I was watching that, and it was kind of funny because you know you're in the you're in the RV like sicker than the dog, and he's outside like trying to entertain himself. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think you discovered a leak or something coming from uh, your uh, from the bottom of your rig at the time. Yeah, yeah, we had a leak in the shower. Uh, that we found when we were there and postponed our plans. We, we missed Quartzite because of it, but. <laughs> well, we missed, the big, we missed the big 10 because of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, in some cases, some people say you haven't missed anything. So it'll be there, yeah. ne it'll be there <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I just want to remind our listeners that um, all the links to your website, push the websites on our screen if you're watching the live version of this, all the links to their website, YouTube, Facebook, all that will be in the description, so don't hesitate to go visit their channel because they do really good videos and uh, very tasteful and very informative. So anyway, uh, so I have a ton of questions for you, if you don't mind. Yep, go for it. <laughs> okay, well, first thing, uh, I noticed you guys use a motorhome. So what kind of motorhome do you have? We have a uh, 2018 Newmar Baystar 3113. 3113. And his name is Chewy. Oh, you gave, it, short you, for Chewbacca. <laughs> you gave it a name. <laughs> yep. We did, because he's big and brown and cuddly, so we named him Chewy. Sweet. Now, did you guys want a motorhome, or did you kind of shop around and say, well, maybe I'd get a fifth wheel, maybe we'll get a, a motorhome, maybe I'll go C-Class? What made you go with the motorhome? But we originally shopped around like six, seven years ago when we started into this, and very early on, we decided on a motorhome, so we... We really wanted the motorhome. That was that was our intent. Uh, so, I, of course, that's going to lead me to the next uh, question: Is uh, how long have you done this full timing? Uh, we started full timing December eighth, two thousand seventeen. Oh, so you the uh, day we took delivery. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, actually, that video I caught you guys doing was actually towards the beginning of your of your journey of the full time stuff, right? Exactly. We were in uh, Boulder City at a uh, yeah, uh, some friend's property, 
Uh-huh. And uh, we were there for about six weeks, kind of, you know, getting our sea legs. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, prior to that, in December, we moved directly out of our apartments, put all our stuff in a uh, Penske truck, and drove to Vegas and moved in. So Sweet. So uh, you guys you guys say you, you originated from Nevada, is that correct? Yeah, Carson, well, uh, Raised in, born and raised in Carson City, and then we actually had a house in Smith Valley, Nevada, which is about an hour from there. Oh, okay. And gotcha. then we uh, sold our house and moved to an apartment in Reno for a year. And pretty much as soon as we got into our apartment, it only took a few weeks, and we were like, you know, why are we doing this? We should buy a coach, and <laughs> that kind of started the process, and and we haven't stopped since then. That's that's what happened. So. So here did, we are. And here we are. <laughs> so did, did you guys uh, use your RV to live in for a while as you were doing the transition to becoming a full-time RVers? Is that what you did? Uh, no, no. We really, we we ordered it. We downsized, got our apartment ready, moved, like I said, uh, moved our stuff into a Penske truck, drove it to Vegas, <clears throat> put delivery of the coach, and moved in and started living in this. <laughs> so by the time we moved in here, we we no longer had an apartment, a house, storage, nothing. We had everything with us. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah uh, that's the one thing that kind of haunted me and Sherry when we were full time is that we still had stuff in storage, and uh, uh, it wasn't until we actually bought a house again that we could finally get our stuff out of storage and quit paying for that. Yeah. So you guys did good. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we we tried real hard, and it 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 took them. Uh, planning and some sacrifices but we decided you know we had so little stuff left that we needed to put in storage yeah we decided we just need to get rid of it it's not worth it so. oh you bet so you just started this full timing in 2017 is this something you want to do for a long term or forever or is there kind of a, a mission involved here or anything like that um well, the mission is just to travel around the country mm-hmm. and, you know, however, we, we have no set plan, but I mean, our first, I guess it's five months now, our first five months, uh, we don't see any reason that we would get off the road to save, you know, health, health concerns or something like that. No, I, I mean, honestly, we absolutely love the lifestyle. We love being able to have the freedom to travel. We've seen some incredible things, even at just in the five months, so... I don't see us uh, settling down or whatever uh, until we absolutely have to. And even then, I don't know, because we're obviously nomads at heart, so we're really enjoying this. <laughs> so, um, of course, a big question everybody asks, and you do not have to give numbers or anything, but there's so many different ways to do RVing full-time and stuff, whether you're young or middle-aged or retired. Uh, I assume you guys, since you're kind of the same age as me and Sherry, are... Um, doing this based off of like uh, what's available to us as seniors as uh, some of us in, have companies that have pensions and and things like that we is that do you guys depend or have your normal kind of income like that or are you guys doing any um, work camping or anything like that to be able to do this no right now we're just uh, we're living off my pension okay gotcha um, I I was an engineer uh, with the Department of Transportation in Nevada, and, and uh, I started very, very young, so I was able to uh, take my pension very, very young yeah. by most people's standards. Uh, so that that's all we have. We do make a little bit of money on the side uh, with YouTube and a couple other things, but I mean, oh, yeah. you know, and I think all of us would do this kind of stuff too. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the yeah. eat out money. <laughs> that's, that, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Other than that, no, it's my pension. Uh, uh, and we just live off that and it's it's I mean, we're not wealthy by any means, but it's plenty and actually the lifestyle helps us Not not so much yet because of all of the the uh, the cost of getting into the lifestyle and all that but uh, yeah. Long term this this is this is cheaper than living in a house or in an apartment. Yeah. definitely so and, that, and that, the great thing about this go ahead. The, the great thing about this lifestyle is that you can choose to travel and and go to expensive parks so you can choose to boondock and save money so you have complete control over your budget and how much money you spend and i think a lot of people are really afraid of the the cost involved and and this lifestyle actually affords you so much more flexibility with that that you know a lot of people don't really understand until they're on the road that you know you can you can control those costs so yeah 
it's, it's great. And that kind of brings me to my next question, which is, uh, and this is um, something Sherry and I do, did too, to kind of help with costs and stuff. But so what memberships are, uh, do you guys have when it comes to one camping or RV parks? And do you have any kind of memberships for helping with repairs or breakdowns? Uh, we, uh, I guess the major one that we're members of is Thousand Trails. We have a camping pass and the new, the new uh, trails collection. Um, and we use that uh, quite extensively uh, since we've got it. I think this is our fourth Thousand Trails Park. We have plans for uh, at least two more uh, that, you know, in the foreseeable future and probably more after that. Um, and then after that, we are escapees members. Uh, they are mail forwarding service. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, we've also, we stayed at one of their parks and they get members only and they give good deals. And they also have the discount parts, which we haven't availed ourselves to yet. We haven't found one, but. Uh, and we're also members of Harvest House and we've stayed at two Harvest House that were both wineries and absolutely enjoyed the experience. It was such a great, I mean, the one place we actually stayed right there, you know, the vineyards were right there. It was amazing. Um, and the other place as well, you know, it, the only thing they ask is that, you know, you you help them, like, either go to a wine tasting or, you know, maybe buy buy a bottle of wine or whatever. But we've so far, we've enjoyed Harvest House immensely. We definitely uh, want to go and do that some more. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it's a really good deal. Yeah. And then as, as far as the coach, uh, we don't have any... Uh, uh, like an extended warranty or anything, but we do have uh, coach net for roadside assistance and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so. uh, but we don't have any like extended warranties or extra insurance for you know. Okay, uh, I did you? Uh, I thought you and stuff. did you buy your RV new or used? We bought it new. Okay, we ordered it this so, last summer. So uh, you're you're able to still use a one year warranty, can't you? Oh yeah, yes we have. Okay. We've, we've been in, we've been back to our dealer for warranty work once. And uh, we've got, uh, we, we still need to set it up, but we're going to hit a uh, new Mar dealer up in Oregon when we're up there. Yeah. Uh, we, nothing major, just nagging little, you know, <laughs> things. But, uh, uh, all we, our, we have the warranty. We've always bought new RVs too. And then the first year is tweaking. It's just, you will be, yeah. I, I, you know, um, yep. not, I, I always found that when I bought a new RV, it was good, especially if you're full-timing. To generally stay around the dealerships for the first couple of weeks <laughs> until, until you make sure yeah. everything's working properly. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you mentioned earlier the shower problem. It, it turned out to be nothing. The uh, the putty around <clears throat> the drain was a little thin. Yeah. And uh, they, they it, a couple hours at a dealership in uh, uh, Boulder or uh, Henderson, Nevada. Um, so I guess we've been in there twice. So, yeah. yeah, like you said, it's tweaking, just little things, you know, that, you know. Well, I mean, it, it happens. They're big, complicated machines that roll down the road. Oh, definitely. It's shaking. It, things happen. So, and, and and as long as the warranty is good, we're going to <laughs> to get as everything fixed uh, <laughs> within that year for sure. Because then we're, we're we'd be responsible for it ourselves. So. Yeah, I'm pretty handy. I could I could handle some of this stuff, but why should I if, if they're going to do it for me? Exactly. Yeah. So we uh in 2006 we had a new uh, 40 foot Discovery. And uh, yeah, that first year was a lot of ins and outs. Some of them were just simple things, and one was a shower leak too. <laughs> funny. Yeah. yeah, those those machines that are. Happened. Yeah. So, um, of course, the other question a lot of people will probably ask you is, do you guys boondock very often? Uh, yeah. I, I guess I'll say yes. We we've only boondocked three times, and it was all five consecutive weeks. But uh, we we loved it. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that stopped us is we had other obligations uh, mm. that didn't, we, we couldn't really, we didn't have any boondocking opportunities. But yeah, we loved it. And it, it was a lot easier than we thought and people make it out to be. Yeah. Yeah, the only, the only caveat is we have a residential refrigerator. So we do have two solar panels on the roof. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you that. Did, <laughs> Yeah, and, and Dan is installing a battery monitoring system, so we know how long we need to run the generator, but we typically do have to run the generator to make sure that the refrigerator gets everything it needs and yeah. batteries stay okay. But we absolutely love boondocking, and any opportunity if we have to do that, we are going to do that because it's, there's nothing better than opening up your front door and going outside and having nature right there. I mean, <laughs> yep. and 
you know, I, I campgrounds have their their perks as well. You know, laundry facilities and things like that. But boondocking is definitely how we envisioned ourselves camping and um, what we enjoy the most for sure. So yeah, I, yeah we go ahead. Uh, we we've heard people say you know that they didn't end up doing it for a year or two years even after they went full time and and we've actually uh, talked to a few people who were shocked that. Only after two months we were out boondocking. You know, um, it, like I said, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. I mean, there are some sacrifices, but uh, you just have to be aware and pay attention to to your tanks and your water usage and the battery. But once yeah. you figure out what you need to pay attention to, it's really not. It, be, it just becomes second nature very quickly. Oh, definitely. Um, uh, I assume you guys have. Uh, I was going to ask about the. Uh, the solar panels and, and I was the same way as we have a little bit of solar in our rig too but uh, the combination of having solar and having a generator uh, I just find it to be the great a great tool to be able to boondock as long as you want because you don't have to rely on those solar <laughs> panels all the time <laughs> yeah honestly our limiting factor is our gray tank more than yep. anything else is I our agree. gray tank but we we have definitely um, worked on our water conservation, and, and I think the next time we do an extended boondocking stay, it'll be even better because we figured out how to conserve even more water. So a little tricks, and yeah, and yeah we, we have three or lots of solar up on the roof, and uh, you know we we still have to run the generator primarily because of the residential refrigerator. You bet. But yeah. we also have the, the stock twelve volt battery still, and at some point. When we wear these out, we'll we'll upgrade to something else and give us ourselves a little more, a little buffer. Yeah. Uh, right now, I think we're we're using probably three quarters of our available amp hours every day just to run the refrigerator mm -hmm. and the and all the other stuff. So we don't have a lot of leeway there. And if we get a cloudy day, then you know we're we're going to be on the generator a lot more. Yep. But uh, but for now, it works. You know, cool. it's totally doable. It'd be nice to have more solar and bigger batteries and all that, but you don't need them, that's for sure. Yeah. No, uh, the, the best thing, um, the, the best advice we have given people that have asked, you know, just get out there. Get out there on the road. You can upgrade your solar. You can upgrade your batteries later on. But you, you don't want to put it off because if you put off making the decision to get on the road, you'll always find a reason to not get on the road. So it's like just get out there and you can do what you need to do as you go. Because you, if not, you know, who knows when you actually get on the road. If you want everything to be perfect, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yep. So and I know it's only been like five months, but do you, have you guys kind of got, uh, picked out one or two favorite places so far? Um, well, we, we just left Yosemite, and that was fantastic. It, despite the fact we lived within about two hours of the, the Tioga, uh -huh. past entrance to Yosemite. We've never been to Yosemite Valley until last week. Uh, so that was fantastic. And, and the park we stayed at, the Thousand <clears throat> Trails up there, was, was, it was a beautiful park, the river running through it, and really well kept up and everything. We really like that. And Quartzite. Quartzite, honestly. Um, we met uh, amazing, we met some amazing friends there, and uh, actually we're camped with Dave and Karen from our Endeavor right now. We met them in Quartzite, and just, uh, Honestly, for us, Quartzsite was about the people uh, that we met, you know, and, and we were able to boondock, you know, and, you know, watch the amazing sunsets, the Arizona sunsets. I haven't seen any that are better yet. Um, just, it, it was a fantastic experience, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like we said, we, we missed the big tent, but we did end up in Quartzsite a few weeks after, and, and we, we were there for three weeks, and it was, it was fantastic. It, it was a great place. We, we'll be back. If, whether or not for the the big show, but we'll be back in that area because it's it's beautiful and easy to boondock in and just and Quartzsite has so many you know conveniences for the RVers <laughs> because there's so many to go there. So that that's nice. You're a very small town, but has a lot of a lot of stuff if you're uh, if you're an RVer. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do, we do, yeah we have amazing. nice <laughs> we do we we do have nice sunsets here. <laughs> you really. I, 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 absolutely amazing i mean that was that was one of our favorite things to do is to go out at night and just watch the sun and if there was any clouds in the sky completely epic uh i really really oh, enjoyed yeah. it so. yeah, we never shot so many pictures and <laughs> yeah. sunsets. 
So, yeah. uh, so of course, you know, um, so those two, those were some of your favorite. Do you have any that were like your worst? And you don't have to say by, say by name if you want to, but oh, no. what, uh, what, what, uh, what did you uh, not like about it? <laughs> we can say one by name and we definitely would never go there again. Um, well, I don't know the name of that place. It's, uh, it, it's within the Johnson Valley OHV area. It's called <clears throat> Cougar Butte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was, it, it looks nice on, on, you know, Campendium and whatever, but <laughs> it, the, the, the spot we chose and actually we walked around and found other spots and they had the same problems that nails everywhere. Yeah. I guess from pallets that had been burned, um, sure. trash. Oh my God. Uh, at night we, we had a, uh, I won't call them a visitor, somebody in a truck. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they were drunk or, but they were out revving their engine for half an hour Turn their lights on our coach yeah. yeah it's it's the only place that i mean besides all the trash which the trash is just it just makes me so sad that people abuse and don't respect the environment and anything but it, i didn't feel safe there even as soon as we pulled up and started setting up i just go it, it just you know, sometimes you have a weird sense that something <laughs> just doesn't feel quite right. Definitely. And that's exactly how I felt. I mean, I felt, I don't know, I just wasn't comfortable there at all. And and honestly, we were only supposed to stay there one night, and I told Dan <clears throat> it's a good thing. Because I honestly, yeah. even even after the whole thing, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning when the guy first showed up. I, I wanted to leave right then. I mean, we have wheels. I'm like, let's just go. <laughs> but, uh, wow. yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't be back there. Yeah, other than that, I mean, we stayed in, you know, several RV parks that, you know, we we may not go back to. They just weren't our style. Right. You know, they weren't bad by any means. That that was really the only bad experience we've had camping so far. Yeah. So, um, and, and do, do you guys do you guys move a lot, or do you like to stay put for a while? Unfortunately, because of uh, personal obligations, uh, we we've been moving way too much. We would prefer to stay a week to ten days in most places, mm -hmm. and then move. Okay. But yeah, we we had a week, a solid five days. We moved every day. Yeah, and that and that was to get to our dealer, and then we had to move the coach down to the dealer so they could do the work, and then back the same day. Um, and that wasn't any fun. Mm -hmm. And then to get up here, we have some family obligations and stuff that we have to uh, take care of. Yeah, that's Again, one. We, we've been moving pretty fast, and you know, we, we definitely prefer to stay longer. Yeah, and, I, and that's something we actually hear a lot. Uh, people that just get on the road is they, they, at first, they naturally try to treat it like a vacation, and so they're like, want to go see everything. And then after a few months of full timing, I hear this over and over again. They go, wait a minute, we need to catch our breath, smell the roses, and slow down and stay at places a little longer. Have you found yeah, that to yeah, be the I, case? Yeah, and, and like I said, while ours were were family obligations and we had to get to the dealer and things like that, uh, you know, we learned that lesson through others reading blogs and watching YouTube, you know, about slowing down. And yeah. boy, for the first two or three months, we were doing a great job. We but, were. <laughs> but then, then, you know, the schedule caught up with us. And as soon as we leave Tahoe here, uh, then we'll be able to spend this summer we plan to, uh, you know, slow down quite a bit and enjoy ourselves yeah uh, it's it's hectic yeah and a lot honestly there's so many amazing things to see and every place that we've been that we've been really quick you know haven't been able to spend very much time you know we know we miss so much so that's part of the reason we like to stay longer so we can actually really explore and kind of get to know the area and you know talk to the locals and see where the good places are to go and and things like that so yeah we we definitely want to slow down for yeah. sure so you know one of the biggest questions we always get and i know sherry and i always got it and i'm sure you're getting it too but what do you guys use for internet <laughs> uh, we, it, it, it's app this happened right now we uh we just uh i guess upgraded we originally we had our phones which were at&t and then uh last summer we uh saw the uh, AT&T Mobley, the connected car, whatever. I, I'm sure everyone knows what that is. Um, that $20 for unlimited internet. Uh, so we grabbed one knowing that, you know, we would need something. Yeah. But then we found AT&T wasn't bad. And for a while we did pretty well, but we started running into places where having only AT&T was really limiting. So mm. just last week, 
we ran down to the Verizon store, swapped over to uh, Verizon for our phones. And uh, so now we have Verizon on phones and tablets, and we have AT&T on the, uh, the Mowgli. And then probably in the future, we're going to end up uh, getting a hotspot through T-Mobile just so we have all three. And we can then we can pick and choose whichever's the fastest, depending. You know, and I, we kind of tell, if we drive out of the campground, out of the, because it's just littered with big, tall uh, ponderosa pines. Yeah. Uh, we'll get five bars. But in the campground, we get two or three. So, so we also have a Weebus on order um, that should be here this week. Yeah, so I was asking. We did, I was going to ask if you were using a Weeboost or not. Not, not yet. We, you know, that that's the thing about when you first get a brand new coach or anything. I guess you know, there's just a lot of expenses involved, and yeah. so we've kind of been trying to do a little bit at a time, and so. We finally got to the place where we're ready to order the Wii booth, so we, we did order it, and hopefully we'll have it soon. Um, so yeah, and then and that and that's why it. I mean, to have at least two providers, and and then the Wii booth will help when we have spotty internet. And for us, even though we're not working for a living on the road, you know, we do have the YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and having to upload videos, you know, <laughs> you're going to need something. Oh, and we sure. tried. You know, we did that. We drove till we found four bars of LTE and sat on the side of the road for an hour yeah. uploading a video just a couple weeks ago. And it was, I'm like, you know, we decided we don't want to do that. That's why we no. push the phone road or we boost. So yeah. well, I totally that, understand what you mean by that. that. I, yeah, uh, we, yeah. Sherry and I went through the same thing and got real tired of chasing down McDonald's and Starbucks and <laughs> stuff like that. And well, so and, we went with an art air card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in addition to that, um, you know, I, I, my my one son lives in Reno, and my other son's in the Marine, Marine Corps, and he's actually getting ready to deploy soon. So I need con- connectivity because I want to be able to be here if they need me for something or they just want to talk or whatever. So not having service uh, the last few weeks has been really hard for me because I, I even though they, they don't call me that often, it's just knowing that I they can call me if they need to, um, it's something that is really important. So that was another reason we switched over to Verizon, just so we can hopefully be more available if they need us. Yeah. So I, um, next question, and this is becoming a subject I've been seeing a lot lately, but has it seemed uh, hard to get into any of your RV parks that you've been trying to get into, especially as you're heading north? No. no I've, I've seen that, too. I've seen a lot of people say that there's so many of us now, but uh, we haven't had any problems um and we haven't been to any park other than one that ha- hasn't had spots available i mean every place we've stayed there's been a lot of spots available so i mean a- as the summer progresses obviously that probably is going to change and we've never been on the road in the summer so oh, maybe that's that true, yeah. will maybe, uh will be a big difference <laughs> maybe i should ask that question next fall <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Because then, because that's what I've heard that a lot. I've seen that a lot as well. And maybe we're just not going to the places that people are experiencing that because we haven't experienced that at all. Yeah, well, I mean, we we have been making reservations, uh, like at the Thousand Trails parks in advance. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, 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 we stayed a month in Twenty Nine Palms. Uh, that's where our son's stationed. Uh, we made that well in advance because it was for a month, but. Uh, we stayed at a few parks that we made reservations, you know, days ahead of time and had no problem. Uh, even even in Oregon State Park, which most people tell you, if you want to get into an Oregon State Park, yeah. you better reserve nine months in advance when the reservation window opens. Yep. We got a week <laughs> at an Oregon State Park uh, about six weeks out. So, I mean, it, it's doable. You might have to work harder, but uh, it's doable, and it, we haven't had any problems yet. Yeah. So um, since you guys have been on the road, has anything out there su- uh, surprised you? That's something you didn't expect. And as you know, um, now you're out there. I mean, is there anything just um, uh, surprised you that you didn't think of um, when, now that you're on the road? Uh, my my answer would be um, the friendships we've made. Honestly, we yeah, yeah. It, it's funny when you're out on the road. You know, you don't have all that formality that you have in in Six and Birch Blake. Yeah, you you meet people and you have a common uh, thread, and you just kind of I don't you just kind of click and and you make friends a lot faster than you would. And 
And I mean, it, it, that that surprised me. I I really didn't expect that we would meet meet people and have such a strong connection, such a strong bond with people, pretty much right away. It it really surprised me. Yeah, for me, uh, other than you know, we already discussed boondocking was was so much easier than than uh, we thought it might be. Uh, I'd say trans transitioning from uh, even our apartment was you know much much larger than our coach. Yeah, it's. It's not a big deal living in such a small space, you know. We, I wondered how that would work, and honestly, I don't miss the bigger space. Not at all. I've tried everything, you know. Like I've told people, you know, our bathroom is really small, but it's big enough to do what we need to do. And why would we need any more? Yeah. Same with the bedroom, you know. It's like our bed fits. We have a king size bed, and you know, you have to shuffle to get around the side of it. But you know, I we sleep in there. Yeah. We're not. We're not ballroom dancing or anything in the bedroom, so it, it serves its purpose, and yeah, that's that, kind of it. It, it. It's a very efficient space, and everything serves its purpose, and, you know, and what doesn't, you know, you come out like, we need some counter space, we use our table, we have a stove cover, things like that, but I was just surprised how easily we got into the motorhome and, and learned to live in such a small space. And being able to clean the house in less than 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's always and nice. And that's like scouring everything, it's fantastic, yeah. I love it. So has, uh, just to take the opposite, has there been any disappointments that you guys uh, have discovered since you've been on the road? Um, no. I don't, no have a, really. I don't have a single one, honestly. Not, yeah. not I mean, we're, we, we pretty much love everything. I mean, there's, there's probably little things that we've, you know, kind of, you know, wished we would have, you know, wished something was different. Uh, but, I mean, it's all minor. Yeah, uh, there's no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call anything a disappointment. No, it's yeah. just you know. So, do you guys uh, that we've had to deal with a, a difficulty? A difficulty we have found that had happened to us when we were staying in courtside. Um, Dan's father became ill, and we had to basically leave our rig and drive up to Carson City for him to have emergency surgery. So that. That wasn't a disappointment, but it was something that, I mean, we knew it could possibly happen. We just didn't realize it would happen so soon in our journey that we would have a medical emergency and have to come home. So I mean, it, it definitely adds some difficulty because if we were in the East Coast and that would have happened, we obviously maybe wouldn't have been able to be at the hospital when he had his surgery. So yeah. it's just something to think about. And that, and that's definitely part of the lifestyle is, you know, you're going to leave friends and family behind and you're not always going to be there for, you know, birthdays, weddings, Christmases, uh, emergencies, and it, it, that can be tough, yep. but, you know, we've, we've come to the conclusion, it's like, you know, we've, we've done our bit for King and Country, we raised our kids, you know, all that, and this is, this is our time, this is our dream, and we have to live it, and, you know, uh, mostly the family has been supportive mm -hmm. of that, you know, uh, they, they, they understand what we're doing yeah. and our kids are completely 100 percent supportive they think it's fantastic they wish that they could do what we're doing so although our youngest is disappointed we're not in reno to uh, serve him dinner every sunday that is true when do his laundry <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, he'll yeah. Get over it, so. <clears throat> so do you uh, did you guys uh, uh bring any of your hobbies with you is there anything that you guys do for hobbies that you either had to give up or you bring it brought it with you and can can still continue to do um, for my part, I had, I had hobbies when we had our house, um, and I mostly got, I, I had a, a couple of telescopes, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, those ended up collecting dust, you know, after a while, like a lot of hobbies do, uh, uh, I liked working on my Jeep in the garage and stuff like that, you know, and those, those went away, and I, uh, I, I fly fish, and I do have that stuff with me, Yeah, but, uh. I, I tried, we knew we were going to do this for a while, and, and, you know, we had some life stuff get in the way and kind of postpone, but uh, we've, we've kind of been angling towards this, and, and I kind of transitioned from hobbies that would take up a lot of space and room to uh, uh, things like, well, photography and, and YouTube mm -hmm. that uh, we can easily take on the road. And that, that's pretty much my hobby now is, is you know, photography and, and uh shooting video and editing here and all that. That's what, that's what I do to pass the time, mainly. And uh, photography is something I've always wanted to do. So 
I, I mean, I love going out and taking pictures and sharing them on Instagram. That's kind of my thing. That's yeah. my hobby. And I can do that from anywhere with my phone. So yeah, it's the, great. The big one Jen left behind uh, was uh, scrapbooking. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. But she worked really hard the last couple of years trying to finish all of the scrapbooks from, you know, when the kids were, were growing up. Um, and then, you know, while she could scrapbook this, I guess she's doing it digitally now. With I the am. And, <laughs> and on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, we've got all those. That, that, that's the only thing we left behind. Uh, a few precious mementos, Christmas ornaments, and our scrapbook there at my dad's place. Gotcha. Um, but uh, she, she had to give that up necessarily because she had bins full of, you know, stuff. And, and it just, you know, it, it's not, maybe if we had a 45-foot diesel pusher, with the, the basement storage, but in, in our gas coach, it's just not. You're still not, not gonna. Practical. You're still not gonna fit a jeep down there. <laughs> no, no. Well, no. We we bring our jeep with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't pull it into the coach to work on. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what lessons have you guys learned, and what would you have done different uh, if you had a chance? Well, honestly, you know, Dan Dan is a huge researcher, and so he did. The majority of the research online, he joined forums, and so we went into the decision with our eyes completely wide open. We knew what to expect. We watched tons of YouTube channels. Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't think of any because we we really did a research. We didn't just jump into this lifestyle. Uh, I mean, we've kind of already discussed it. I think the the lesson that I learned is that you know, and this has been a process as we. Uh, moved <laughs> yeah. out of our house and uh, downsized and then out of our apartment downsized again and then into the coach and downsized yet again um, is you know it's the experiences that we're having out here that are those are more precious and more valuable than all of the stuff that we've gotten rid of I mean there, there are a few items that I, I probably missed that we've gotten rid of but largely I don't remember what we got rid of um <laughs> Of course, you know, the so, big, I mean, so the big question I'll add to that is, do you miss having a home? No. No. Actually, I, I tell people all the time when they ask me, I I honestly feel less just equals freedom. And for me, or for us, freedom is everything. Freedom to go explore and do everything uh, is, is priceless. And I don't, I don't miss the house. I don't miss having to clean it. I don't miss taking care of the yard. <laughs> yeah. I, Truly, I, I I can't think of anything I miss at all. The only thing I might miss a tiny bit would be having a washer and dryer right right there. But I would totally go to the laundromat, I, and I have no problem going to the laundromat for the freedom that we have in this life. Yeah. So what are you guys' yeah, uh, future plans? Um, immediate future, we're headed up to Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a friend of the family that we're going to see. Um, and then we're going to go actually spend some time with Dave and Karen, uh, up, uh, with their home base up in Bend, Oregon. And then we're going to meander for a while until this fall. We're going to drive down the coast, yeah. um, stay along the coast as much as possible. Um, and I'll say, bro, I already know that many people have already warned us, don't drive the coach on highway one. Like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, we so, did it. But, uh, you'll like Bend, or that, you'll man. love Bend, Oregon, by the way. We're from there too. Oh. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Dave and Karen speak highly of it, and it looks like a, a great place. Uh, and then after that, we're going to uh, we're going to spend some time down in Southern California. We're big Disney geeks, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do what we've always wanted to do is uh, spend some time down there and uh, be able to just kind of enjoy Disneyland at our pace instead of the hectic pace we usually, you know, three days or five days, and you know, trying to do everything. Um, and then after that. I don't know. Yeah, uh, we talked sure. about going back east the year after and uh, going to Disney World and you see the East Coast and all that. Yeah. But who knows? I don't know. We'll, so, um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of speeding things up if you haven't noticed here. <laughs> it's like, bro, I could talk to you guys all day. So um, we're getting <laughs> to the end of your interview here, so for sure. But what I wanted to do is, um, uh, first of all, thank you. So I don't forget the thank you guys so much for the interview. People will really enjoy this. But um, oh, as, oh, we really appreciate it. So um, before you go, though, uh, what would you say to someone wanting to do this? Just do it. Yeah, just, just do it. it. I mean, honestly, the hardest part for 
for me was the downsizing and trying to decide, you know, the <laughs> antiques and things like that. But it's so freeing. I mean, I know I said that, but it really is. Once you once you start letting go of all those things, oh, Deborah, like, it really it really is freeing. You don't realize how how much that stuff weighs you down. You know, the the hobby that you never do, or the <clears throat> you know that the big expensive gadget that you bought that is constantly calling your name when you walk by, but you just don't make the time. All those things actually add stress to your life, and when you get rid of them, it's just amazing so yeah. just do it yeah, yeah and, and i i would just add real quick to that you know don't don't wait don't wait for the perfect situation don't wait for the perfect opportunity don't wait to get your perfect rv just get out there and whatever you can and start living life it, it isn't as the sacrifices aren't as big as some people make them out to be it's not as hard as some people make it out to be it's actually uh you know it, it's actually not that different than living in a sticks and bricks house, except you can move around and see a lot of neat stuff and, mm-hmm. and meet a lot of new people. Yeah, yeah. your backyard changes and you get to see <laughs> things, so. Yeah, you should make a book. I always thought it'd be great to make an RV book say, what's in my front door today? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and I would, the last thing I would say about that is, you know, time is bleeding and tomorrow is not guaranteed. So yep. unfortunately we have, we have talked to some people and we actually have someone in our family they waited uh, to go out on the road and they were only on the road a year and he got sick and ended up passing away. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, um, his, it was his aunt, his aunt's biggest regret is that they didn't do it sooner, that they didn't go out and enjoy their life sooner because it, it just was taken away from them. So, I mean, if you can do it, do whatever you need to do to do it and just do it. Definitely. Well, hey, guys, I want to thank you so much for doing an interview with us on RV Talk Radio. And I want to remind everybody that's watching you guys that we'll have all the links to your websites, uh, to your all your social uh, networks and stuff in our description. And um, um, just uh, <laughs> make sure you visit these guys' uh, um, website and their YouTube channel because I, I really find you guys... Um, homegrown a little bit and down to earth so i really appreciate that while watching your shows that, oh, yeah that, that, that's kind of our uh, our thing keeping it real keeping uh, it real we have to borrow some <laughs> comments but yeah. uh, <laughs> um yeah and, and we, we appreciate the opportunity and, and uh it, this was fun yeah, yeah. it really was so thank you so much well thank you very much and i'm gonna let you go because we're running out of time but thanks again for uh the interview and uh we'll probably try to catch up with you in the fall maybe Okay, that would be fun. All right, well, great. Well, thanks, guys, and take care. Thank thank you. Well, that was a great interview, and I want to thank Dan and Jen, uh, Nevada, Mm -hmm. (laughs) for uh, spending some time with us. Uh, They had a very, very busy schedule, and we really did want to do Skype with them, but the Internet they had was not as reliable as we uh, all trusted. So uh, the phone interview went really well, and we're really happy that they took the time uh, I mean, they had a really busy schedule this week, so and uh, it took a couple of weeks for us to actually coordinate some time with them to actually do the interview. Uh, they were actually, when we first contacted them, we were out of range, and so <laughs> anyway, uh, the one thing I really got a kick out of is um, they seem to be doing really well with uh, uh, using uh, Thousand Trails. And uh, but if you listen to the interview closer, you realize that they're also working their way up to. Uh, to the north and once you start hitting like if you try want well, even uh in bend oregon they're going to be hitting the bend oregon i think they'll probably want to do some oregon coast everybody does in washington it gets really tough to use thousand trails to be kind of spontaneous uh due to the season uh when you get into the summertime of course that's the time the washingtonians and and uh uh, Oregonians like to play and so uh, it's a really a good idea to get your reservations in early so even with thousand trails uh, does not guarantee you a place to stay and so uh, yeah um, and that's hard to do sometimes to plan that kind of stuff out and uh, it sounds like that they also enjoy boondocking and it's uh, been kind of reported a few times that boondocking in Oregon and Washington is a little tougher than say down here in Arizona uh, so yeah you really have to plan your uh, your trips kind of uh, I don't know acutely uh, just because of you know the, 
it's just a, a whole different process up there. The other thing I, I, I did get a kick out of is uh, um, while I was going to talk to them about insurance and things like that, and they were very fortunate that they have a uh, insurance plan through there in re retirement and uh, worked out really good for them. And that's one of the reasons why Sherry and I got off the road for a while is because the insurance was so high because of Obamacare. Because once you kind of don't have a company to fall back on, you got to get private insurance. However, there is some other options out there. And uh, as I learn them, in fact, Derek, uh, the guy who works with me and does shows with me, is uh, actually involved in insurance. So I'm looking forward to uh, learning some new things with them. The other thing uh, they found, it sounds like they're very happy using a motorhome. And it sounds like they uh, tow a Jeep. And uh, I got to admit, there's definitely some nice advantages to having a motorhome as opposed to like our fifth wheel um with the fifth wheel i just feel like the uh, older i get the more i'm like there's so many things to remember for the process of unhooking our fifth wheel that uh i'm just you know one bad mistake uh, not one pin close you know shut or locked and uh, you could be damaging your truck or trailer really easy uh, I did like the time uh, back in when we were full time timing the first time where we actually had a motorhome. I found found it to be a little bit more um, uh, user friendly as far as uh, unpacking and packing and getting ready to go. With the exception of having to load the car on a dolly, uh, we used a dolly, and some people used the tow bar kind of uh, setup. Uh, tow bar setup, if you kind of done some research, can be kind of costly. Um, but it's got its benefits too. Um, dollies, like when we had a dolly, we actually wore out one of the bearings and it was kind of a pain in the neck to get that repaired. But all in all, a dolly worked out just fine for us. Sherry would just drive it right up on the dolly. We strapped down the tires, make sure she's in neutral, turn the brake off. <laughs> it was a front wheel drive and we used a Mazda at the time. So front wheel drive is the easiest way to go then. But uh, more and more cars are getting this all-wheel drive thing, so it gets a little bit more complex. But uh, yeah, so it was really interesting. And, and, and the other thing is, like, uh, uh, not every RV park is going to be beautiful and nice. Uh, you will come across a couple that are, uh, you know, they mentioned that they came across one and it was kind of almost scary and almost felt like it wasn't very secure. Uh, I've actually been to one recently last year when we were going up to Washington and stopping in Fallon and we they have a little RV park uh, at a casino there at a, uh, I think it's called a Super 8 Bonanza Casino stuff and they got some ragtag kind of folks uh, staying there that I mean we never had any trouble and stuff but it wasn't it was one of those times you just kind of want to make sure the doors were locked and all that kind of stuff and and uh, I, you know, I don't suggest it as a place to stay, but it, we used it just for overnight. So we were in and out. We got in kind of late, left uh, kind of early. So it wasn't that big a deal, but uh, security and safety has always been a, a big one for us. Um, what were some of the other questions I asked them? Uh, yeah, they're also learning the lesson of learning to smell the roses. So uh, I know uh, when we first started full-timing, uh, Sherry and I, you just get so excited. You just want to go the ne next place and the next place and the next place. Uh, then you kind of find yourself kind of getting burned out a little bit on the process of setup and, and take down. And, and, and it, it just gets kind of, uh, I don't know, it gets under your skin a little bit. And so it took us a month or two to kind of start saying, you know, let's start staying at these places a little longer. Uh, the benefits of that is you get a chance to chill out. You get to learn the areas a little bit better. And uh, uh, it can be a cost savings. You can get weekly rates and even monthly rates if you decide to go to an area and stay longer. So uh, uh, they've, they're learning their lessons on that kind of stuff. And, 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 and when you do get busy, you almost get frustrated because once you kind of learned how to relax and smell the roses and live for the now, uh, to get back on a busy schedule will drive you crazy. Well, guys, we're getting to the end of our show, and I want to thank everyone for listening to RV Talk Radio. And this, of course, is a semi-live version of it. And uh, we have to do it this way to do the interviews. It kind of takes the pressure off the people being interviewed. So I want to remind you that you can find RV Talk Radio, the podcast, at rvtalkradio.com. 
And of course, if you're seeing this live show, you're probably seeing it from YouTube, or maybe you actually just caught the live show. But uh, uh, so we always make a YouTube version of this. But uh, our primary uh, listeners are listening to us the podcast, and we truly appreciate it. You can also find RV Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio, which is a full-time radio station that we have, and it plays RV Talk Radio episodes about uh, three three times a day, something like that, one in the morning, afternoon, and evening. And uh, yeah, we uh, definitely uh, enjoy having that new feature. We can also be found on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Intunes, and TuneIn. Um, and uh, you know, you can play us on your Alexa or your Echo. You can play us on your smart TV. And of course, you can play us on your cell phone, just like a radio. So. Uh, a lot of people will listen to our shows in their car, by, and the newer cars now, you just plug it, your cell phone into the auxiliary and there you go. And then come to find out that some of the newer cars out there are getting the internet radio stations. And uh, once again, you just go to TuneIn or uh, iTunes and uh, iHeart or <laughs> those places there and just ask for RV Talk Radio. So yeah. Anyway, I want to thank everybody so much for listening, and I appreciate all the great feedback. I know a couple of people have been bugging me about getting this interview, and uh, it took us a little time to get it all coordinated. And we have to you know, respect the fact that these people that are on the road don't necessarily always have their phones or internet available to them when we like to do the show, so we have to work with their schedules. And uh, hopefully I can get Derek uh, um, on some of my shows in the future, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I got, you know, we got summertime coming up here and we got the heat uh, here in Arizona to tell you about. Uh, I think we're getting also ready to uh, launch our boat um, in about a month or so up at Lake Powell. And uh, by fall, we'll probably be going back up to Central Oregon to catch up with our RV. And uh, we may be making some modifications in that scenario too. So once again, thank you very much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Be safe, everyone, and we'll see you in the next show. Thank you. Bye.